Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this video is all about how to use a growler. Now, what is a growler, you say? Well, it's not just my stomach when I sit down in the dentist chair, or I think a glass of beer is sometimes called a growler, but this is the growler that we're talking about, and you saw it recently in one of my What Is It, and most of you recognize it and named it correctly. So let's talk all about this, and then I'm going to show you how to use it. Well, this is the growler that I was talking about in another video. This is a Sun brand, Sun Electric Company. They were bought out in the early 90s by Snap-on. I don't know what became of them. They probably do not manufacture these anymore. It's pretty obsolete technology. Remember that this is the one that I crawled into the dumpster at the high school and pulled out. The teacher didn't know what it was, so, but I did. I pulled it out, and there was something else in the dumpster at the same time from uh, Sun. Let's take a look at it. I remember all of this stuff from the first year I started teaching at the high school in 67. Also in that dumpster that fateful day was one of these Sun distributor testing machines and I just recently ran into this up at the Claremont Museum and took a picture of it. And these were really neat. I like to watch the auto teacher demonstrate setting a car distributor. And about the only thing left of that is I did pull this little three jaw chuck off of that machine and that is located right down there to hold the distributors. The other day I was getting ready to start this video, it was a failed start, because as I started to uh, monkey with this and uh, play around with it, I found that this cord was totally bad. Now this is a new cord, but let me show you pictures. Well, here's the old cord. That's what it looked like, so I had to replace that. It's just all cracked. This is mid-60s vintage. So uh, just so you can see what was on the inside of this, I took a couple pictures and a real short video clip. Let's take a look at that real quickly. And this is what it looks like on the inside of the growler. And there's the wire that I soldered onto the transformer. Look at the size of the coil for that magnet. Now you won't find a growler at your Toyota dealer. Everything nowadays in regards to repairing cars is remove and replace. I think you know that, but this was a machine to test the armatures of starter motors. This is a starter armature. This is a generator. Well, they haven't used generators in cars since, what, about 1960 approximately. So you can see why this is considered obsolete. But men that are working on uh, old tractor starters or uh, old cars from the 50s and so on, can salvage these and repair these or at least check them to see if they need to be repaired or can be repaired. Generally we've got to throw these away also. It's not something you can repair at home but you can turn down the commutators and do some tune-ups on armatures and I will show you a, a clip, not a clip, but a link to a video where I turn down a commutator I'm going to redo that video, so watch for that someday. And here's a armature out of a much smaller permanent magnet type fishing motor. The growler hums and growls, and hence its name. Now the growler can do three different tests on your armature, whether it be starter or, genu or generator. Generally, the generators are going to have smaller wires here. In what you're going to find in a starter motor like this. You see how thick the wires are. What did this come out of? This was a very popular starter. They probably made 10 million of them. You can perform three different tests on the armatures using a growler. You can test for shorts, test for opens, and check for grounds. This is the name of a video I made a long time ago about turning the commutator on an armature. 
So when you turn the machine on, a very strong magnetic flux is created in the V-Way. Hear a growl? You might as well visually inspect your armature before you go through these tests here. Make sure that there are no broken wires or wires that are burnt through or solder connections that have come loose or if you see that the varnish is charred on the wires you can just assume that it's uh, got to be scrapped. You really can't repair one of these or rewind one or if you find a shop that would do it, it would have to cost a thousand dollars because it would be so labor intensive. The first test that we'll make on the armature is testing for ground and here are the directions taken out of a book also listed at the end of the video. Armatures are tested for ground by using test lamp and test points. Place one test point on core or shaft, not on the bearing surface, and touch the other test point to each commutator bar in turn. If the lamp lights, the armature is grounded. Discard grounded armatures. Okay, now let's test for grounds, and these are the test probes kept in this little holster here. This is nothing more than a continuity tester, and you could use any kind of a continuity tester or ohm meter to do this, but this is just part of the test included on most growlers. Not all growlers will be the same. This is kind of a, a upper end, a top quality one, for the time at least. So with the switch on, now I'll have to move the camera. This just shows you that the machine is on, but the continuity light is back here, so I'll move the camera. Okay, and here's how we test for grounds. Remember that this is just a continuity tester here. So when I turn the growler on and touch the points together, we have continuity and you can see the light come on. Now, we should not see the light come on when we do this test. So I'm grounding either to the shaft, it could be to the shaft, or onto the laminations here, and check each segment or bar, and we should not get a light. Now this can be done a little faster just by doing this, and I need to go all the way around, so at some point I'll rotate this a little bit, which is kind of difficult to do. It's a very strong magnet. And then I'll check the remainder here. And as you can see, there are no grounds. So this is a good armature up to this point. If it was grounded, we would have to discard it and get a new one or have it rewound, which would be preposterously expensive. And the second test we're going to make using the growler is testing for shorts. Armatures are tested for shorts by use of a growler. Place the armature in the growler, turn the growler on, and with a steel strap such as a hacksaw blade held slightly above the core, slowly rotate the armature. If the blade vibrates, the armature is short-circuited and should be replaced. Now here is the test to see if your armature has a short. Provided with this particular growler is a thin strip of metal and it's attached with a chain and it's survived for all these years. But if you do not have one of these, a hacksaw blade will do. Simply turn the growler on and hold the strip of metal just a little bit away from the lamination. Do not touch them. If you have a short, this will vibrate. And you have to rotate this. And go all the way around it. And you can see whether or not there's a short. And this one is okay. And now I will repeat the test for shorts on this starter armature. And it is 
okay free of shorts and it is very difficult to rotate the armature with the growler on. A lot of resistance. Okay the third and final test that we're going to make on this armature is we're going to test for open circuits. Armatures are tested for open circuits by use of a growler. Place armature in growler and turn it on. Adjust the contact fingers so that they contact adjacent segments on the commutator. Observe the meter reading. Rotate armature and test each succeeding pair of segments. Each test should have approximately the same meter reading. A zero reading indicates an open circuit in the winding. Now the third test is checking for open circuits. That means there could be a wire cut through or burnt through or something like that or a solder joint came loose here from overheating. That's more likely to happen on a starter armature. But anyway we're going to use this probe here which has two little copper points and there's a cradle for it here. And this is where we're going to use the uh, meter and the sensitivity control here will allow you to get different readings here but what matters here is that the reading is approximately the same as we go around and it could be used like this and you're straddling two adjacent armature sections but the cradle is made to lay in like that and this can be changed as far as the elevation is concerned depending on the diameter of uh, the commutator but now turning this on watch the needle I'll turn it down just a little bit and it should be about the same as I go around on each pair that I'm checking. The main thing is that it's approximately the same and if I'm going to turn that off because this is starting to warm up but if they're all about the same go all the way around then uh, we do not have any open circuits so those are the three tests. Do not run the growler for extended periods without an armature on the coil or it will overheat however there is an overload protector. And yes you were right this is the starter out of a Ford 8N tractor but probably the same armature was used in uh, and starter was used on the Ford Flathead V8s from many many years so a lot of these were manufactured. <laughs> And you can see that the reading is about the same. So that concludes the test and concludes this video. But, so stand by for extra credit for my better students. This Delco Remy book is a very good book from General Motors. It's from 1956 regarding starters and generators used in GM products. And there is a section here on uh, the armatures but it does not particularly tell you how to use a growler that is there's no pictures of a growler like there are in some of the other books that I'm going to show you but this is a good resource. This old IT manual from 1951 shop book dated 1951 volume 2 has a real good section on generators and starters. As you can see there are two full pages including four nice photographs on how to use a growler. I'll zoom in and take still pictures of all four. This is the Motors book from 1950 for trucks and tractors but probably any of the old Motors manuals will have these same sections. And there's a lot of these books still floating around. And look at the great pictures in this book showing how to use a growler and plenty of text over on this page 
explaining the details. I'll zoom in and take pictures of this. This is the Dykes Automobile Book Encyclopedia from 1941. They must have printed millions of these. I suppose you're familiar with it, but there's a good section in this book as well. This is the 19th edition. There are two pages in the Dykes book regarding armatures and growlers. I'll zoom in and take close-up pictures of these sketches. And last but not least, almost any older automotive textbook is going to deal with armatures on generators and starters. You probably will not find this information in newer textbooks. As you can see, there are two facing pages in this book that uh, talk about the use of the growler, but this is exactly what I have been showing you, so this is a repetition, but these are particularly nice pictures, so I will zoom in on them. Thank you for watching. There will be just a few still pictures to come, so watch for those. Hope you enjoyed this lesson on how to use a growler. There will be a follow-up video on how to magnetize and be and demagnetize your tools using a growler. So watch for that. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now.